Even the best logo, business card, or poster design can be ruined with poor typography. Welcome back designers. My name is Mike Pickett and I'm a logo and vector designer with nearly 20 years in the design industry. So this video is going to be all about the character panel inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now if this is your first time here and you actually end up learning something from this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below before you take off to another video. If you could hit the like button at the same time, that would be a great help to my channel. Now whether you're typing out your client's name for their logo, creating a single line of text for a tagline or a poster, or even doing full paragraph work on a business card, a brochure, or anything like that, your typography really needs to be on point. Okay, that was a bad dad joke, I'm sorry. My key point here is that you need to know what the various options are inside of the character panel and know how to adjust them to make your type look correct. So this video isn't about covering things like leading and kerning and really the correct settings for it. This is about showing you where these settings are so that you can get in and start adjusting them. In a future video, probably in the next few weeks, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna focus more on proper kerning, proper leading. We'll also get into the paragraph panel so that we can focus more on alignment as well as things like ragged edge, rivers, not to mention a few other things that you really do wanna know if you're gonna start working with typography. All right, so let's get into Illustrator, have a look at the character panel, and I'll show you everything that I know about it. All right, designers, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator. So I went ahead and just created some text on the artboard. Very simple, just three lines. Now to access our character panel, there's a few different ways we can get to this. There's actually quite a few ways we can get to it. If we click on the text first, you'll notice that up here in the control bar, I have a little drop down or I can click on the character word here and that gives us our character panel. If you're not seeing this control bar when you're selecting this, and you wanna go up to window and make sure control is selected here. If not, you won't see these controls. The other place we can see this is in the properties panel. And right down here, you'll see that we have this character option. I can also click on the A with the cursor line beside it. And that's gonna give me a flyout here with the character panel in it. Or I can go command T on my keyboard. And once again, that selects the same option. So a few different ways that you can get here. Let's select the block again. And then we're gonna go through the various options that we have available to us in the character panel. So first off with the typeface or the font that we're going to select, you have two different options. If you click on this little arrow here or on the magnifying glass, you can see we can either search entire font name or search first word only. That's going to give us two different options when we're actually looking for a font. So if you know the name of your font, you can just start typing and it's going to narrow it down for you. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's say Montserrat Medium. This is a font that I use quite a bit. Now, once we've got our font selected, we can then go into the font style and select light, medium, semi-bold, extra bold, whatever we want for our actual weight of the font. Some fonts you're gonna find have options ranging from ultra light to extreme bold or extreme black. It just depends on the typeface that you've downloaded and what options you've actually set up. Our next little block is the font size. So from here, we can go single point up and down. If I hold down shift on my keyboard, it's gonna go up by 10 point increments. Same back down again. I can always use the drop down here and just select a different font size that I want for this type. So next we have our leading and the leading is going to allow you to set the line height that you have in between and leading is going to be from this blue bar to this blue bar. So right now we're set to 86.4 points. Now. If I click on this, you can set whatever you want. You see that as I go down this block, the spacing on the lines will actually extend and become larger. If you go auto, it's going to put it back to this 86.4, which is where it's set right now. We also have kerning. So with kerning, we can set the spacing between individual characters. You see right now we have negative nine between the S and the T, negative 11 between the U and the S. This is where it comes into play when you're setting typeface for a logo. You're really gonna wanna make sure you've got your kerning set. And so in that case, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna adjust each one of these to set the spacing in between character pairs. So for example, the spacing in between the O and the M here is a little loose. This is about right between the S and the O. So you can come in, select the two that you want to adjust, and then you're gonna knock them down depending on the type of kerning that you're going for. So I like to go ahead and set my kerning on my full word. Let's do that real quick. I'm just gonna adjust. This one can go back out just a little more. I'm gonna pull this one in some. And once I'm happy with what I have for my kerning, 
if I find that I want a little bit more breathing room between the characters, I want to keep everything even, that's when I'll come in and actually set my tracking. So I can come in and give this a little bit more breathing room with a 10 or maybe even a 25 tracking on it. And that way it's gonna adjust everything evenly and keep my kerning where I set it. Next we have vertical scale and horizontal scale. I don't recommend using these separately because otherwise you end up with issues where we've got stretched text. So for example, if I come in and set this up to 150, well now this just looks odd and you shouldn't be stretching your text either vertically or horizontally. So for example, sometimes I'll want to change just one line of text. So I've got this line set up right now that's 72 points, but I want this one to be 25% of that. So I still have it at 72. I'll come in and change both of these two boxes down to 25 each. And then I have this is 25% of this. So in this case, I would have to go in, of course, and adjust my letting to make sure that it comes back up and joins in with this text. Next, we have our baseline shift. Now, I use this most of the time when I'm working with Superscript, but there are other options for this or other uses for it. Essentially, what you're doing, though, is you can take to the T and we can come down here and just adjust the baseline shift. So that's going to take it from, let me just click off. It's going to take it from the baseline here and split it up and you'll see that this blue line has now shifted up. That's the difference which would be, if we highlight that again, that 11 points that I added. Next we have a text rotate. Once again, another option that I haven't found a good use for, but just so you can see how it works, if we highlight, say, the top word here, and I can select this and go up to, say, 90. And we've now shifted that text. So, I mean, it could be useful. You could have this so that it comes in and lays across the top of the word sum here. I don't know how legible that would be, but maybe in some poster design, a little bit of creative business card design, as long as you're not doing this with a client's name or anything on his business card, it could be useful. Our last options down here at the bottom. Let me just back up here. So I was going to go Control Z or Command Z to back up, but one thing that I should show you, if I just Command click on the icon next to the block, it'll actually go ahead and reset it to where it was or back to the default value, and that works for any one of these. So I've got the word just highlighted right now, and I want to take it back to the default typeface size. I can just Command click on the side, and that works for every single one of these. Moving down to our bottom options, let me just change something here real quick. I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to go to type, change case, and I'm going to go sentence case just to get it down so that we've got some lowercase and uppercase on here. So again, I've got everything selected, and if I click on this bottom one, that's going to go all caps. It's going to change everything in the block. If I click on this one, it takes it back to small caps. This one is our superscript. So again, that can help with this baseline shift if I want to use it. So the one time that I'll use superscript quite a bit is when I'm dealing with like a registered trademark. I'll just go option R. So I'll take that, and then I'll go superscript. And I'll usually knock the size of this down as well, depending on what the client needs. So if you look, now it's way down here. So in that case, I'm going to use this baseline shift and push it right back up to where it belongs. Next, we have subscript. So that's going to take it down below. And if we reset this one, you can see that that knocks it down below the baseline. We also have underline and strike through. Those are pretty self-explanatory. So if I highlight some text, and click underline. Of course, I'm going to get the underline. And then lastly, strike through gives me the strike through text. All right, designer, so that's the character panel. A lot of different options available to you in there. Now, this is your first time in Illustrator and you're still kind of fresh with even just the type tool. You might want to have a look at this video that I've linked right up here. It's going to give you more information on kind of the basics of the type tool. So that's it for me in this one, designers. I hope you learned something. Again, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Now get out there and design something. Who's looking forward to the next season of Stranger Things? Their teaser was pretty awesome that they came out with a couple weeks ago.